I can watch it later. Yep. Hey, Julia, can you hear us okay? So, no, 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 you present through teams, you just can't present through PowerPoint live. You, can, you just have to share. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay. You just can't share through PowerPoint live. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Here, I got to test something real fast. Hey, can you hear us okay? Yeah. Okay. My name is Corey Shell, and I'm a senior cybersecurity consultant with uh, Dean Dorton. And today we're going to go okay. over security. Okay. I think we're getting a little bit of feedback. Can you guys hear us okay? So we're going to move these tables out of the way. All right. Um, are, are you guys able to see my screen okay? I should maybe just register so that we can get the people we need to get away. I thought I said I had a office call this morning. What time is the next one? Uh, the Corey's doing a Nova board demo right now. And then okay. All right, I'll share my content. We'll get started. All right, so my name is Corey Shell. I'm a senior cybersecurity consultant with Dean Dorton, and today we're going to talk about security awareness training. So the agenda we're going to cover within about 15 minutes, uh, we're going to go over what are the reasons why you should have a security awareness program. Uh, we'll cover some some of the typical red flags that you might look for in phishing emails. We'll also go over some of the best platforms available to you to help you establish an aware, awareness program. And then we'll discuss what some typical awareness training topics are. And the last thing we'll cover is a demo and that shows you how easy it is to get started with the, assessing your organization's awareness. So um, we'll start with why should you have security awareness? Um, I think one of the top business just justifications today is a lot, of, a lot of cybersecurity insurance questionnaires are, um, you know, asking, do you have a security awareness program in place? Do you proactively assess the effectiveness of your awareness program by doing simulated phishing exercises? Hey, will you come? And you know, also according to all of the research from various sources, like the the Verizon Data Breach Investigations Report, uh, over half of these data breaches involve phishing. And so, uh, the more awareness training you provide your your staff, your employees, and the more often you uh, do your own phishing simulations to assess the effectiveness of your program. Uh, the, the less likely you are uh, to have an incident or a data breach involving phishing and the more resilient you are against those types of attacks. Um, and then also most ransomware attacks usually begin by exploiting the human component of cybersecurity, uh, which is typically done via phishing. So a lot of I'm ransomware getting incidents getting start out from phishing attacks where the, you know, allowing those the bad guys to gain that initial access to that organization's network. And lastly, um, you and your employees are the last line of defense against cyber attacks. Uh, you could refer to that as the human firewall 
uh, whenever a lot of your other controls fail, uh, typically, you know, having em employees and staff that are trained to uh, look for those red flags and to alert the appropriate personnel to s suspicious activity uh, can be, you know, that, that can be the last line in your defense that saves your organization from an attack. We know. Now, I've got a really good article here. I've linked to it at the bottom uh, that mm -hmm. kind of really goes over the reasons why you want to train your users against phishing attacks. Um, this is a ransomware attack that affected a very large organization uh, that you know, res result, resulted in millions of dollars of loss. And it started out from a phishing email and went from a user clicking a link in an email uh, that looked authentic to the entire network uh, having ransomware deployed within about five hours. And I, I wish I could say that this is not typical or that it's a, a rare occurrence for um, an attack to go from that initial foothold to action on objectives or deployment of ransomware in that short of a time frame. Uh, but we really are starting to see that dwell time decrease dramatically for you know, the time that it takes the bad guy, once they convince somebody to click on something or open an attachment to ransomware is getting less and less. Um, so the more you can train your users, the more res resilient you're going to be against those types of attacks. So we'll cover real quick some indicators you should look for for phishing in an email. Th these are things that you're, you're going to learn that your, your staff or employees will learn uh, through a comprehensive awareness program. Um, so we'll start with some indicators here. You know, we've got this this email. Start with uh, indicator A. Uh, the first thing your users should look for is to check the email address. So, you know, does it appear to come from a legitimate organization? You know, organization's domain. Is it coming from a personal email address like a Gmail or AOL? Um, uh, a lot of times we see impersonation emails where someone will take a personal email address, send an email to an internal person uh, saying, hey, I need to um, change my payroll, my direct deposit information. They may, they may contact human resources and try to pose as, a, as a, an internal user. Or someone may impersonate the, the company CEO and email employees saying, hey, I have an urgent request. I need you to buy me some gift cards and send me the card numbers. We see things like that all the time. And if your staff are not trained to look uh, for that indicator, uh, they may fall for it. And then another indicator here, if you look at the top, the salutation, dear customer, it's not addressing the person, the, it's not addressing the recipient by name. It's just a, a general, you know, dear customer. So uh, that's another indicator. Uh, looking at C here, uh, grammar or spelling mistakes. Um, you know, very common for a lot of these phishing emails to have grammar or spelling mistakes. Some of the more sophisticated ones may not have any grammar or spelling uh, mistakes, but there will be some other indicators here. Uh, so D, this is very common. Uh, pretty much any phishing email is going to try and create a sense of urgency. You know, you must take action immediately or this bad thing will happen. And if your staff are not trained to look for that, uh, to, to be cautious of emails that try to prompt a sense of urgency, uh, they may fall for it. Uh, the next thing here, a lot of these phishing emails that lead to uh, significant business disruption uh, and data breaches usually have malicious hyperlinks in them. And so training your users to know how to find, you know, the actual URL, you know, where is this going to take me if I go here? Um, it is very helpful, and very beneficial. And, you know, there would be a different process probably for them to check a link in an email from their personal, their computer or their laptop than if they're using a mobile device. So that, that's something else that we want to be trained on. Uh, and then also they need to be suspicious of attachments and only, you know, open ones that are expected. Um, it's very common for a lot of malware that leads to ransomware uh, to be delivered via email attachments. Those could be um, zip files, password protected zip files, uh, Microsoft Office files like Word and Excel. And typically with those types of malicious documents, the bad guys trying to prompt the user to open up 
uh, the Word, Excel document, and then to enable macros. And they'll usually have like a picture in there that walks them through the steps they need to do it. Um, and that typically leads to malware running on the computer. And then, um, you know, G, if, uh, if they receive any suspicious messages that sound too good to be true, it generally is. Um, and then lastly, this is very important here to educate your users and your, your staff. Um, just because they receive an email from someone that they know or trust does not mean that they've sent it. Um, it's very common for people to get their, their um, email accounts compromised and for those to be used to target other organiza organizations or people that they know and trust. So, uh, you know, we want to discuss what are the best platforms that are available to you uh, to implement a security awareness program. And if we look at market research from Gartner, from Forrester, uh, really, I think of the market leader and probably one of the best platforms out there is Know Before. It's a very uh, easy platform to use. Um, it integrates with, uh, you know, a variety of platforms. You know, most people use Microsoft Office 365. Very easy to set up and integrate and make it very easy uh, for your staff uh, to report suspicious or phishing emails and as well as to assess the effectiveness of your program by doing those simulated phishing exercises. So these are some typical topics that you'll uh, be trained on and most awareness programs. So watching out for the red flags in an email, uh, which we just went over, especially being wary of hyperlinks or attachments within emails. Uh, educating uh, your staff on the importance of two-factor authentication. So not relying on just a password to log into systems, you know, having uh, two of the three, something you have, something you know, something you are. So a password and a, a app on a phone, as an example. Uh, also training your users on how to use strong, unique passwords or passphrases. Uh, you know, hopefully or ideally using a password manager to manage those in a secure manner. Uh, patching, backing up, and protecting your computer. And then really the most important thing with an awareness program is, you know, helping to train your users and ensure that, you know, they, as your last line of defense, you know, sometimes uh, your users, when they report a phishing email, um, can, you know, they can maybe uh, alert you to an attack before a lot of your other uh, controls do. So. Uh, the last thing we're going to close with here is how to fish your users in under one minute 